Thanks so much, Martin. A round of applause for Martin. It's true that it starts to be way back, right? Since we know each other, it's pretty crazy. Anyway. All right. So originally today, we, I, was, uh, I planned to talk about the risks of RDP and how to mitigate them. But then I realized I only have half an hour, so I needed to adjust. So this is some risks of RDP and how to mitigate them. But then I uh, found some problems, and it became some risks of RDP, how to mitigate them, and a villain reported to Microsoft. So we're going to go through this. Uh, it's a heavily edited the edition of the talk I gave a month ago at uh, ETSECON, which was 45 minutes. So I switched a bunch of things, and some of it might not be super coherent because I was doing CTF 101 yesterday, and I had a hacker jeopardy tomorrow, so I didn't have as much time as I wished I had to prepare. But you'll have a great ride, I'm sure. All right, so about us, no time for that. Uh, no, actually, I should say, so I was supposed to present with Lisandro, but Lisandro, uh, his visa didn't get approved in time. So apparently, when Immigration Canada says it's going to take 23 days, well, they don't mean 23 days for real. And it's not even 23 business days. It's like 23 days of Jupiter or I don't know what. But uh, one day, you'll see Lisandro, I'm sure. He'll have a visa. They are good for five years. So once, once he'll have it, he'll present here. Either here or at GoSec, we'll see. All right, so uh, it's just by myself. So RDP. RDP, as uh, many of you know, is uh, the remote desktop protocol. It allows you to connect to a remote system and have graphical mouse and different kinds of I.O forwarded in a secure fashion. And uh, it is basically, like for geeks, it's like SSH with more features and or problems. So the RDP layers, so this is why this needs time. But you know what? Let's forget about most of it. It's not that interesting. And uh, it's been uh, already hammered on a lot of time before. So we're going to focus on I.O., clipboard, and drives. And by I.O., we mean display, uh, keyboard, and mouse. So these are the areas of focus of RDP today. Um, so RDP security. What happens with RDP? You have, at the beginning, uh, like ancient history of RDP. You had RC4 and graphical login. So why I precise graphical login? This is pretty important in the design of the RDP protocol. And it's early flexibility, but was also a mistake. So we're going to spend some time on that. But so RC4 was a custom, I think, semi-hard-coded key. Anyway, right now, no, almost nothing supports it. And if you do that, people can pwn you in like fractions of seconds. Kane Enable supported breaking the RC4 uh, connection mechanism like 15 years ago, I think. So what most people doing non-NLA, which is the modern one that we're going to get into, uh, uses right now, it's TLS plus graphical login. And yes, this is the TLS, like transport layer security. But then everything, like all the channels, IO channels are set up. And then you authenticate via the, the keyboard and mouse and graphical, which is a lot of, of code and surface. What happened after is TLS plus network level authentication, so NLA, which relies on credit SSP. And we're going to talk about that. And I had planned on talking about remote credential guard and restricted admin, but these are not enabled by default either on the server or the client. So unfortunately, they didn't make the cut for the 30-minute version. So risk of RDP, well, of course, the biggest risk is uh, monster in the middle attacks or Mallory in the middle or meddler in the middle. I don't know what to say anymore, but I don't want to say man. So it's going to be monster in the middle for me. All right. Um, so what are the risks? Well, the risks are of a security downgrade attack. So NLA goes down to TLS, and this works by default. What happens also is that user can click through warnings, although you'll see later that this might not be relevant anymore. Um, and the impact of that uh, monster in the middle attack is access to display, access to keyboard, access to clipboard, server side takeover, client side file stealing, and client-side takeover, implementation pending. We'll have that one day. So why 
am I talking about RDP? Well, I have a shout out slide way later, but I need to address that two of the guys who worked on PyRDP are back there in the corner, Emilio and Maxim. A uh, round of applause for these guys. And Emilio, Emilio presented uh, uh, about PyRDP here, but this, so this talk is basically the, uh, the broader uh, protocol, uh, look into the protocol instead of look at the tool uh, of it. But so all these references, which you'll have available as clickable links in the slides, are to the stuff where we presented PyRDP and how to use it. So we're not going to spend time on that. We're just going to focus on risks and impact. But uh, without these guys, none of this would be possible. Um, so. What does a, a protocol downgrade look like so you can identify that risk? So uh, the normal flow for uh, a modern RDP connection with NLA is you get a dialogue, a native on the client side dialogue that, uh, where you input your credentials and then you, go, uh, you get the certificate error if any. If you don't have certificate error, you don't get any. If you map a drive, you'll get an additional warning because mapping a drive has security implications, which we'll see later. Now, what does the degraded flow looks like? So if someone has PyRDP in front of you somehow, sorry, um, what you'll have is you'll have the certificate error first and then a graphical login. So on any system that you connect, that you, then you get to a graphical login, there's something fishy going on. Uh, because in most cases, even if RDP is not, uh, not RDP, even if NLA is not enforced on the server, if your client supports it, it will be upgraded to NLA automatically. So having the graphical login is a, a, a uh, shows you that something's really trying to negotiate at the lower security level of RDP. So this is the, basically one of them is the graphical and the other is the, the Windows native. And so why did Microsoft did graphical login? Well, I assume that it's for flexibility reasons because everything is delegated to the graphical pipeline. So no matter how you want to authenticate now or later, you can do it because as long as it relies on keyboard and, and mouse and, and graphical interactions. Whereas when you implement this like the, the right hand side, then it's at the protocol level. So if you want to change anything, it needs a change in the protocol, which means a change in the client and the server. So they kind of thought they were smart, but they weren't. So NLA, so it's, as I just said, authentication before the session establishment. What are the security advantages? Attack surface reduction. Think of all the code displays and stuff. We'll, we'll, I'll show a list uh, later. Also, DOS resistance. So if um, you send one packet to connect to RDP, and then the server replies with like virtual channels and, and, and display bitmaps and stuff like that, then you can do potentially uh, use that as a uh, denial of service. And also, a lot of resources on the server side are allocated to set that up, right? Oh, I have a client. I need to set up a whole virtual desktop, uh, whole desktop shell and allocate like at least 60 megs of RAM, maybe more. And so if you do that consecutively, then you have a DOS on the server side. Also allows a single sign-on. It was introduced in RDP 6, by default since server 2012 and Windows 8. And it's the famous uh, tick box, usually uh, in a lot of uh, legacy system or the shady deployment things, you'll see like, oh, go untick that. You know, then you shouldn't do it. So I mentioned the attack surface reduction. Imagine all of this needs to happen at the server side and on the client side even before authentication is done. So the untrusted user has access to all that surface. And this is why they got rid of it by using NLA. Now, what, is, what does the authentication part of NLA looks like? So it's called Credit SP, and inside the SP Nego, you can do either NTLM or Kerberos. Um, I'm not super good with the AD stuff. I'll need help on f and some further research is related to that. But what's interesting that I want you to get out of this diagram is that the crypto prevents a monster in the middle attack because it mixes the, the stuff, the fingerprint of the public key with the challenge, which, which means that you cannot 
uh, monster in the middle it in the TLS sense, like negotiate on the one hand and then fake a new negotiation to the, the, the victim. This doesn't work because of that mix in the challenge. So how do we attack NLE? What are the risks? So the first one that was obvious, because I mentioned it earlier, is the downgrade attack. So that works. Um, how do you prevent the downgrade attack? Well, you enforce NLE at the server side, obviously. And you can also enforce it with PowerShell or with group policies, which are listed here. And one of the, 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 power, the group policy way prevents users from disabling it later, even administrators, which is good. Now, we were like, OK, that's not cool, but how do we attack these environments? So we thought, well, if the server decides, what if, and, and we are in the network path, how about we redirect it to a machine we control? Well, it works. So we detect that NLA is enforced on the server side. We decide, OK, we forward the packet to a different destination. Uh, to a, an attacker control non-NLA system, and if the user is curious and clicks through the warnings, he'll get in and we'll have him. So this non-NLA redirection, unfortunately, is as designed. So we had an exchange on Twitter. I asked the Marc-André Moreau, a very a, a prominent expert on uh, RDP, like, what can be done about it? Isn't there, isn't there a way to enforce NLA in the client? And uh, basically, it was like, mm, not really. And um, unfortunately, the more mitigation advice, the good news that I had is the stuff I cut from the deck. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to mitigate this attack, you need to look at restricted uh, admin or remote credential guard. Why are there two different features? Because one of them works for AD and Kerberos environment, and the other one works for when stuff is not domain joined. So they cannot overlap. The, the technologies are just incompatible. And this is why it's not enabled by default. And this is why this whole thing is a mess. So the third attack, Alex Beaulieu, who is probably, or maybe not, but he is at NordSec, um, did implement that attack. And so he, uh, we, 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 draw, we whiteboarded this with Emilio way back. Uh, and we were like, they got the crypto right. Unless we found an implementation error, there's no way we're going we're gonna to attack that. And then Alex, uh, one day uh, working on PyRDP, said, well, this blue part, you're right. We can't attack it. But the, I realized after it's done, we, are, we fall back to TLS. There's no keying material derived from that used after, which means that if we have the server's private key, which works in forensic context or honeypot contexts, well, we can just pass the encrypted blob, don't look at it, don't understand it, and then we fall back to TLS, and so the attack works. So we are able to attack, well, we, the whole world is, is able to attack RDP NLA if, and it's a big if, you have access to the target's private key. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate the NLA attack, uh, uh, the NLA bypass attack. And for this specific case, we decided to try, if we use let's encrypt certificate. Does it work? Do we get warnings, certificate warnings, or not? Do we, can we use pretty much any cert to authenticate RDP? And uh, look at this. I'm going to pause it a couple of times. So we are connecting. So on the left hand side is the victim. Uh, on the right hand side, the shell is a uh, PyRDP running, and we are opening the player. So the player is the interactive attack tool where you can take control of the RDP session. So now we set all that up. So the victim connects. First warning. Okay. First warning, I'm mapping a drive. So this is expected unless someone click, don't ask me again. I never do that because I always want this to be in my demos because it's important, caveat, to understand. So if, if the users are properly trained, this doesn't happen. Well, I'm clicking through anyway here. But then, no certificate demonstrated. I'm authenticating. The, the victim is authenticating regularly. We have control. And this is an NLA system. 
And you can see on the top, the padlock, right? So no certificate error whatsoever, no, nothing was, uh, uh, no, no warnings, and the padlock is there. And then uh, access is, is granted. And so this now will become a generic uh, short video of the risks of all the stuff that we can do once we uh, convey the user to, to uh, get in like that. But think about one scenario. So man in the middle link, someone where you have access to the private key can be a relatively rare occurrence. But so one way this was weaponized in red teams is that you send a .rdp file as an email attachment, almost no provider blocks it. Credentials are pre-populated. Oh, like we see, so right now I am capturing all keystrokes. I am um, saving files from the client at the attack level without the client knowing that files are being looked at. And we, you, ha you can save them interactively. This can all also all be automated to be done automatically because it doesn't scale in a pen test to be looking at people's screens like that. So now we're looking at the secret. And it was collected, and it's a video from ATS account, unfortunately. But so the red, the, the, the red team te technique that I just mentioned is called Rogue RDP. There was a nice blog post by um, Ready Today guy. It's in my notes. I don't have access to them. Um, but uh, Mike, Mike Felcher, Fetcher, uh, a, a red team guy from the US, and he's, pr he's very good and very solid. And it works, right? Because all of the, the, um, the, the IOCs or all of the stuff generated is um, is coming from legitimate processes of the Windows stuff that works on the server and the MSTSC on the client side. So it, it, it's kind of something that is flying under the radar right now for, from a lot of the EDR's perspective. So now we're taking control. So this is an, another feature that I wanted you to realize. So you can see that on the right hand side, stuff is happening because we took control. But what we do on the client side is we, ju we just block it. So we don't, you don't see anything, and then you can run a payload. This was an example. And then um, you, uh, you, we can give back control to the client, and then the, c the client will have access to the, the, the system again. Last is the clipboard stealer. So an interesting thing about the clipboard stealer right now uh, is that I use the clipboard on my host but it is automatically shared to my client VM. And this is automatically shared to the server. And the server always says, I want it. So boom, clipboard stolen. We are collecting stuff from bad guys right now using this clipboard feature, and it's pretty interesting. Chat messages, I IP addresses. All right. So. What's the VILN I mentioned at the top of the presentation? Well, it's the um, it's a net NTLM hash capture. It's a feature Lisandro added back in November, November December. I reviewed it for a long time. It was complicated. So we figured like the NTLM exchange. Okay, we need the private key for the NLA stuff if we want to do the NLA bypass attack. But the handshake is still happening. Can we fake our own challenge? Instead of using the server's challenge, we, we, we can never do anything with it. Can we generate our own challenge? And then whatever the client sends back to us, we're going to use it for, uh, crack, to crack the hash. So we can crack that net NTLM uh, v2 hash. And we knew it was going to work because Responder implemented it. But it's like it was super badly documented and um, uh, Responder is not uh, a comprehensive RDP system, so they really did what they needed to do in order to do the attack. But we wanted to support all RDP versions and integrated this in our toolkit. So we, we thank them and we give them credit for having come up with the attack, uh, but we implemented it in our own tool. And so what does this look like is that we basically, in the monster in the middle layer, uh, send a challenge dimension, we steal the hash, and then you send this to John the Ripper or Hashcap. And so it looks like this. And when you crack it with John, for example, with the work list, uh, you do then crack them. So again, this is a hash, a hash cracking attack. 
So depending on the complexity of the user's password, it might not yield to automatic results. But as Pentester will tell you, the more you collect, eventually you'll crack one. So how can you prevent this hash capture attack? Um, you verify the connection to the RDP server. So server address, domain name, you always look for valid certificates. But as I've shown, you can get a let's encrypt one. And turns out that you don't even need to respond to the, the HTTP challenge of Let's Encrypt in order to get one. Someone, after seeing my talk, sent me a resource on how you can generate Let's Encrypt certificate for your LAN. So there is a way with uh, the EFF to do that. So if attackers would be doing this, it could get nasty. But what I wanted to get at is how bad really is it? And this is where we needed to report something to Microsoft. So we have our victim on the left, attack tool on the right. And we're, we're connecting. We're, uh, sending the, we're sending a password. So OK, I did a failed login attempt just now. I know it's super small. Trust me, we have the hash at the right hand side. It doesn't really matter. Just trust me here. But the, um, so I did a, a login attempt failed, but we did collect a hash. But where was the certificate error? We didn't get it. Is it possible that it happens after? So this was for a login failed. Even if the login is failing, we could still crack that hash, by the way, and get the password that the person did input. So now, at the second time, I, I put in the right password. Whoops, missed it from a split second. So if the, uh, the user correctly attends Kate, you will, we, you will get the hash that you could crack. And the, uh, the, uh, this puts the client in just a uh, weird state. And so it happens to do an uh, RDP connection, internal error occurred. And I played, I've played with, it, with this for a long time. And the internal error is so deep that all subsequent connection, even goods, good ones, are going to fail. I don't know what's, what's changing in the state of the client. Something's getting really weird here. Um, but so this means that we can collect legit uh, hash of a user that successfully authenticated and the error message um, is kind of not obvious, not something you're going to report to uh, if you're being attacked to your IT. And you had no certificate error. So this means, let's just finish. Is it long? I think, OK. So yeah, the video ends with, uh, we're going to take the hash, and we're going to crack it. And John, uh, I have time, because I cut so much content. So I'll let it go to the end. We'll see. And the password is a bit, you know, it's purple, I think. But so use John on the hash. So PyRDP features can attack a whole LAN, by the way. So if you are uh, in the middle on the network path, you could, you know, just monster in the middle a whole slash 24 and then just collect these hashes and try to make sure that when the user gets pissed off, you just, you know, shut down the thing so that they can work. It's a pretty destructive attack. I have to admit. But so imagine in an internet cafe or something like that. So here, we, the video finishes with, we crack that hash. But so what does that mean, OK? It means that pretty much you must never use RDP uh, on untrusted networks. Because everything by default that could be done was done, was enabled, but still we collect the hashes. So without VPN, RDP, thrown in the garbage. Or well, yeah, I mean, at your home, maybe you trust your network. That's fine. We're not even in internet cafes much anymore, anyway. Um, but so the other uh, thing we can recommend is avoid NTLM, use Kerberos, and audit uh, NTLM usage. I was told this is possible, but I would need someone with uh, better knowledge of AD to help me in that research. I just don't have the lab or the capacity and, or the enterprise network to validate that. And I don't know how practice, practical this is anyway. So wrapping up, 
Attacks on the client. What can we do? What are the risks? So we can steal files, clipboard, keystroke, record the screen, uh, steal hash, or plain text credentials. So if we can't perform the downgrade attack, we steal plain text. If we can't, we can steal hash passwords. We can do code execution via DLL side loading, implementation pending. But this is what the red teamers are doing with the rogue RDP system, and they are using PyRDP, by the way. But so. Um, the way I say implementation pending is that we have access to the file I.O. channel. We, we just created it to steal stuff uh, right now, but probably before the next NordSec will have a path to write files. And so the right now trendy attack is you put a DLL in the Teams, uh, you know, very popular Teams uh, chat client. And Teams is vulnerable to DLL side loading, so you implant a DLL with the good hijack stuff in it. And so if you generated the DLL um, uh, specifically for the target, so it's not, you know, the hash is not known, then what, they, what TTP can the, the blue team really get, right? Because this is coming from RDP, you know, stuff that no one's looking at right now. So I think this is probably a very effective red team technique uh, to use. But I'm only a researcher, so maybe the practicality is not there. If anyone is really trying to use it, go look at the Rogue RDP stuff. And if you want help or feedback, I would be interested. But uh, we need to talk about the blue stuff too, right? We need to fix this. Um, so attack that can be done on the server, well, credential, credential brute forcing, sessions takeover, common injection, as we demonstrated. Now, the future, we're just, just opened up so much. So. RD gateway, I'm not looking at remote desktop gateways at all. Apparently, I can probably support them and attack them. Um, require, I would like to see, do we have any options for, I want the TLS certificate to come from a specific CA, otherwise I don't allow the connection. This would get rid of the whole, uh, let's encrypt can sign any cert, and this makes the user think he's safe. I want to look at uh, NTM restriction, shadow framework, which is both on the defensive and offensive. And I want to doc start documenting some of this stuff inside in blog posts. Now, what are the red theme takeaways? I'm wrapping this up. Um, so RDP is often misconfigured and under the radar. And you can do more than credential brute forcing with it, um, I think. So it should become part of your attack uh, toolkit. And again, this is niche, corner. Try your regular stuff first. But think about it once you, uh, you, have, you, you are against walls. The blue theme takeaways now are never allow your employees to use RDP on protected networks. And I know this is completely opposite of the zero trust people who are trying to get rid of the VPN, but you'll have to encapsulate this in a web somehow, right, to remove all of these, these attacks. So if you're like, oh yeah, we're, we're zero trust, but RDP is still going play, uh, like on its own without a VPN, it eh -eh, doesn't work. Um, train your users not to click through certificate errors. Now, make sure NLA is enforced by default. And I gave the group policy to do that in the talk. Um, and long term, we'll have to think about, and you didn't have the research, unfortunately, but you'll have to think about rolling out either remote credential guard or restricted admin uh, for client-side enforcement. But since I've written these lines, Microsoft patched uh, uh, last patch Tuesday, maybe not this month, but the one before, uh, it was a, a critical vulnerability in an enterprise network having either of these activated. So they, some, some people are still finding problems around those security technologies. I want to give a, a big special shout out to Marc-André Moreau, a weight coding. Um, he works for Devolution, and he is really helping me validate. Like when I, I, I'm like, is this a vulnerability, or does the Microsoft people are already aware of this? And he's like, no, I think, I think they're not aware of that. I think they haven't looked at it that way, because they're not attacking it like you are. So he helps me a lot. And um, together, well, he, he's like really connected with the Microsoft guys, and he's like on Twitter, like tagging them and saying, like, you should look at this and reply to this. And so Devolution are really trying to fix the problems of RDP that even Microsoft is, uh, is in denial of it. I opened a case with them regarding the, the Net and TLM attack, and they said it's as design. They closed it uh, two weeks ago as design. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I mean, 
he he so while i'm looking at attacking rdp more he's looking at like okay how can we completely ignore it he works for devolution who are providers of uh, remote access um security and and stuff and they had a booth here at nordsec but they are really trying to do the right thing and have the problem fixed at microsoft in microsoft's product so I i'm going to finish with the thank you um, special thanks to those that made PyRDP possible. So Citroner, the RDPy guy, Emilio Gonzalez in the back, Francis Labelle, I haven't seen him, but he might be here. Um, Maxim Carbono in the back, uh, Alexandre Beaulieu, and Cool Acid. And so I had a question, but it's more see you at the panel. Thank you for being here. <laughs>